Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Service Online. Hopefully you've had a great week. Let's get after it and, and uh, just enjoy some time with God. One, two, one, two, three, four. Praise, oh, 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 
Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise go. Cause through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. And strongholds are broken. And I'm living by faith. Through you, I can do it. Is it you who gives me strength? Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open, and strongholds are broken, and I'm living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Oh, oh, oh.
Yes, we worship you, we worship you. Yes, we worship you. this week. Had a good week. Uh, spent a lot of days lazing around, probably to my wife's discontentment. Um, less work, more sleep, but I enjoyed it. Hopefully you're enjoying your time wherever you're ending up spending your time. Maybe you're working, maybe you're stuck at home, uh, but wherever you are, uh, you know, I was thinking this morning, be great to be with you. You guys are the ones ones that uh, I love to be with in these times. Um, but the most important reason that we're here is for God and to worship Him and to glorify Him because we need that. It's not because God needs it. It's because we need it. We need to worship Him. Uh, I know I've not mentioned anything about giving. There's a You can uh, give online. We set it up finally. Jordan and Alexandra and different younger people have been bugging me about getting to the place that they could give online because they don't, they barely know what a check is. Um, and so that's available to you on the, on our Facebook page. If you want to give online, you can also mail it in. Um, if you need information on that, just get a hold of Debbie or my mom. I'm just going to ask, the, have Nick, we're going to get into a different bit of a groove here. If he can figure a little something out. We're going to talk this morning about identity. Yeah, that'll work. I'm just going to be who I am in the front of everyone out in Facebook land. And uh, we're going to talk about identity, who, who you are, what you, what you should get from this time and what you shouldn't let be taken away from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Yes, I should act, oh, trying to make me just like they are, oh, but the problem, you see, God who he reigns on high, he knew exactly who he wanted me to be, and I'm me, oh, I'm only me, nothing else that I can be, it's what God created me. 
church at uh, our location you're used to this if you're watching and you don't come to our church and you're like what in the world is he's doing it's just being me and I think a lot of times it's easy in times like this where we're shut up and so many people telling us what we should and shouldn't do and I'm not saying that some of it's not truth we need to be careful we don't want to tempt the Lord but we still cannot allow these circumstances and these situations to define us we need to hold on to our identity. We need to know who we are. Uh, something that uh, Nick had said, and I kind of put it into my own words because I couldn't remember how he said it. Um, some people want to keep shopping at Forever 21, but they need to, to be shopping at just for forget it, you're over 40. And this morning, the way I dressed, I did it on purpose. I typically don't wear skinny jeans. Um, I don't find them comfortable. My kids don't like to see me in them, but my wife, when we go out on dates, she likes to give the illusion that when she looks at me, everything but my gray hair and my face probably she can go, oh, he's still young, maybe, I don't know. But anyhow, these are stuff that we'll wear going out dating when we're away from home, and uh, I'm cool with that because I wear it for her. But overall, for me, I don't really, this is not who I am. This is not uh, how I would typically have myself. And I was thinking about just watching so many things. I watched so many people on the internet and doing these things and everybody trying to find the best way to reach people. Uh, some people are, you know, so many people are, you're sitting in a chair and you're kicking it back and you're trying to look all comfortable. If that's you, do you. But uh, uh, really the thing that the people need to see right now on the internet is the diversity of what the church is. We can't lose who we are. We shouldn't all show up on Facebook and our services shouldn't all look the same. We shouldn't have all these somber faces talking about the just the reality of the situation that we're going through. Because you know what? The reality of the situation that we're going through is it's all good because God is in control. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever is what Scripture tells us. And He doesn't change just because situations change, just because there seems to be junk going on. And we need to not lose ourselves in all this hype and all this media. And in fact, I'm getting to the place where uh, like uh, some friends of mine, we can't hardly stand to watch the media because it's just uh, so easy to tell that it's just a bunch of gook. And so I want to be who I am. 
Uh, someone, in my opinion, who's 53 years old, which is how old I am, should not dress in skinny jeans. And in fact, in reality, for me, there's not very many people that should dress in skinny jeans unless you're, like, really skinny, and that doesn't count for me. Maybe, you know, that works for Kevin because he's, like, super skinny. Uh, but uh, we're going to look in here um, in Corinthians 9 and 22, and I want you to think about the reality of being able to take actions that are necessary without losing your identity, taking the actions necessary to, to affect people's lives, to make things better for them, to edify, exhort, and comfort them. All of these things that we want to do as Christians, in fact, that should be the main thing, the main message we should be out there doing. It should be edifying people, exhorting them. It should be comforting them. It should be leading them into a location of peace. It shouldn't be getting them all riled up and all in a, a mess. And so many of my friends even, I sit and listen to what they're talking about, some of them, and it's just like, man, gobbledygook, gobbledygook gobbledygook, gobbledygook. Get the fact that Jesus is in control. All things are going to work together for good unto them that love God and are called according to his purpose. We have nothing to fear. We can just go before him. And in 1 Corinthians 9 and 22, it says, to the weak I became, I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. And I was thinking about this. Uh, I, there's a difference between taking on weakness and being weak. And I know you may say, well, I'm physically going through something, I'm weak. But Scripture says that he says when we are weak, he is strong. And so we have strength in him, and we need to be in that spot to where we're, we're trusting in his strength. And as people... Uh, even without being a Christian, as people or as Christians, we need to understand the difference between knowing how to function and produce in every situation without losing our identity. We need to know how to function and produce in every situation without losing our identity. That means that you should be able to connect with people wherever they're at, but you don't have to take on their actions or their attitudes in order to connect with them. The scripture is very clear. You can't walk together unless you agree. And at times for us to minister and care for people, we come into agreement with them even uh, in a moment or take on where they're at in a moment so that through the grace of God and the power of God and the spirit of God, we can connect with them where they're at and lead them to a better location. Not so that they become something that they're not, but so they can really, for the first time in their life, get to experience the genuine them. Now, just a little bit ago, I was like, uh, the musicians are playing, and I'm singing, and I'm just being myself, and I'm actually holding myself back in some ways because I would dance and do stuff, but my son Jordan is here, and Alexander's going to watch this, and Debbie has to watch it, and I have a whole group of church people that uh, put up with me when it's not on the internet, and so that's in my mind, but uh, I would probably dance and do all kinds of stupid stuff just because that's who I am, and I'm willing to just be ridiculous, enjoy the freedom that God's given me. Uh, um, but that's truly who I am, and I, found, I knew I was that person even way back years ago. And if uh, Mrs. Rawson is watching this morning, or if, uh, if um, my typing teacher, Mrs. Schindel, is watching, yes, I cheated in typing. You already know that. I did it. But uh, she reminded me of that the other day. But uh, it, was, uh, it was part of me a long time ago, and I had different people from our community because I used to mow the lot across from the church, and I'd just be out there mowing the lot and pushing the mower, and I'd just be singing and doing and making up all this music and doing all this stuff because that's really who I was, and I'd spend my time dreaming at night and all this craziness and all these things I was doing, but all of that I really was interior-wise and truly was wasn't evident externally because I'd grown up in church, and growing up in church is everything about doing and being the way people want you to be if you're not careful. And in reality, what church should be is that location where anyone can come as they are and be who they are and then allow God to work things out for them. And I'm really believing this time, right after this moment, when there's time for us to get back together and those that God's drawing and drawing their hearts, and it, maybe they can see and feel and they develop a moment where they feel like that this is their church. Maybe they never come through the doors because they're too scared or they're too far away. That's fine. Or maybe some that are so close come in the doors, they find their place in God, they find their purpose, they find God's plan, and they just come completely 
as screwed up as they are, if they're screwed up, as good as they are, if they're good, it doesn't matter how they come. They come to God, and they let God be God, and we let them be them. It's not the typical thing that we hear. It's not the typical thing you'll hear with a lot of people talking about the gloom and doom of God and his judgment and all of this mumbo jumbo that means absolutely nothing and is not the gospel in which that we're supposed to preach. The gospel in which we preach, if we hear it, is such a beautiful message of how God did it all for us and you don't have to do it for yourself. You can be who you are. You can uh, let him bring the changes necessary to make your life better, not to make God greater because there's no way you doing better makes God greater. He's great. He's above any other. Amen. And in the audience far, far away, I hear shouting, amen. Uh, And we can be in that place. Uh, A lot of times this idea of function can take on the reality. One of the things, if you run into me, uh, if, if I'm your pastor, which is a, a whole group of people that I'm looking at, they're shining pictures this morning. Uh, I'm their pastor, and it's okay. I love if they feel like at a moment they say, hey, Pastor Mike, or if they say, uh, they introduce me, hey, this is Mike, my pastor, because at one point or another, I won't be a pastor, but I'll always be Mike. Until the end, on my gravestone, unless my, uh, if, if they want to give me a gravestone, uh, they can just hefty me, throw me in the ground, that's fine. But uh, if there's a gravestone, it doesn't need to say Pastor Mike Kirschbaum. It just needs to say Mike. Because that's who God made me to be. My parents named me that. I believe was, they purposed for it. They planned for it. But a lot of times when we begin to function, we begin to find our place in God, it's easy for us to take on this mindset that who we are has become how we function. And I know a lot of pastors and uh, evangelists and uh, apostolic people and, and that they get completely confused uh, with their identity and they lose who they are in their ministry and they just lose the understanding of keeping it simple and remaining that person that God created to be. And that keeps us balanced. That keeps us humble. That keeps us connected. If, we, if all of a sudden I'm Pastor Mike Kirschbaum, Then all of a sudden I put on myself uh, some type of a covering or even a responsibility that God doesn't want me to have to live up to. He wants me to be led by him, to follow him, be who I am. He absolutely wants me to change uh, day to day and sometimes even moment to moment, but he's in charge of that change. I'm not Even a lot of times I've found things in my life that I'd absolutely like for him to change. And I've said, God, please change this about me. Change this whole thing. Take me in a different direction. And I find by the time when he finally does change it, he was using it all the time for my good. He was working things out. Sometimes he was like he had sandpaper and he was just roughing off, taking off my rough edges. And I find a lot of times he keeps me in a weak location so I know how to be weak with those that are weak. He keeps me in a spot where I need his mercy because then I have mercy for other people around me. He keeps me in a spot where I'm understanding the things that I need to repent of and the, things, and the ways that I need to ask him to forgive me because then I'm open to hear and accept people who need the same type of forgiveness. Uh, I want to be a believer that knows who I am, but I'm not just a, I'm not just a believer. I'm Mike. And I'm Mike who was chosen from the foundations of the world maybe to speak and to preach and to do different things, but all of that can be taken away, and the most important thing can't, and that's that God is for me. He's my Father. And in reality, whether you believe in God or not, God is God, and He's your God. And God sent His Son to die for you, and He died so that you can be a son with Christ with God and have access to Him. And I would say in times like this, if you're facing moments of depression or loneliness or whatever you happen to be going through, first thing, throw it off and find a location of thankfulness. Uh, uh, this week, if you were watching my Facebook, one of the things I had posted earlier in the week was the, the fact that I just couldn't understand why the, the golf course was shut down. I mean, surely at the golf course, you can t- stay socially distanced away from everyone. 
And I thought, man, it's so goofy that the golf course is closed down. You can go to McDonald's and pick up a burger inside and go to their bathroom, but you can't go out to the golf course and hit a ball around that only you're going to chase, only you're going to touch, only you're going to I mean, just it seemed completely ridiculous to me. And then the lucky thing happened is yesterday they opened up the course. So this morning before this, I went and played golf, and it was like so good to play golf. And I walked nine holes, pushing my little cart, reminiscing of the days back when I used to do that when I was young, and I made it all nine holes without having a heart attack or some kind of a heat stroke. But we can be in these locations that where we need to find something to be thankful for. I'm so thankful the golf course is open. And I'm not just thankful that the golf course is open for me. I saw the hundreds of people that I haven't seen that many people on the golf course for forever, but every hole, groups of people spread out, getting a break from all the mumbo-jumbo that the media tells us about and all the things that they're trying to build up all this fear. I can guarantee you this, if I'm going to go, let me go hitting a birdie or an eagle on a hole and I, I can just flop down and be good. And the life can go on without me because life doesn't go on and we're not successful because of any one person. We're successful because God has a plan and there's no possible way that his church is not going to perform and do and accomplish everything he said. Uh, he, his scripture says that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And I'm just in that expectation. Remember that any change in your life is going to come from flowing with him, from following him. It's not going to come just because you determine it and you set the plan. The real changes that last in your life come because you choose to engage with him. And like water that comes over you, the washing of the water of his word. And when I'm talking about the washing of the water of the word, I'm not talking about just scripture. Scripture is good and there's some word of God in scripture. But I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that brings such a cleansing day to day in your life and in your thinking and in your outlook that it completely completely changes you, and you don't sometimes even notice that you've been changed until way down the road afterward. Uh, I've told you guys that uh, go to church here a lot of times, um, and probably people who knew, know me from the community, if you're watching, I used to have a lot of trouble with anger, and uh, I like to fight. I like to be mean. Um, I don't know why. I probably was a bully at different times in your life, so if you're watching this, and at one point in my life, I seemed to bully you. Um, I'm sorry, can't really do anything about it now, but uh, I, I had this part of me that was there, and I remember at one point uh, I was playing City League basketball. Luckily, uh, my buddy Julian um, was there with me, and uh, things had gone kind of in a bad way. The refing was really poor, and I just got angry and just so upset, and I was just ready to take those two refs outside and just put a beating on them. I so badly wanted to take him out there. And I'm not even sure it was all about what had really happened or if there was just some part of me that was just waiting for an opportunity to come out because there was this anger and this whole thing that I'd had under the, under the surface of things that I'd had to deal with all the way through my life. And I remember that encounter and, and then how embarrassed I was after it because I really was stupid. And, I was, and even the guys uh, later in life, I got to apologize to them, which was great. And uh, if you're watching this morning, yep, that was me. And uh, just uh, to that place to where that I was completely embarrassed. And I remember going away from that, and that was a, a, something that happened in my life that created a desire in me to ask God to change me. God, I don't want to be like that anymore. I don't want to have that kind of anger. And from that point, instead of having more moments that were closer and closer where it seemed like I had to have some way to get out my frustration, some way to release myself, but just further and further away and, and until at one point or another in my life, un, un, even knowing to myself, I'm just not someone who tends to get mad anymore. I'm not somebody who wants to take out my frustrations on, on a somebody or a, on a situation. I'm, I'm typically uh, not somebody, when I, one time my dad had gotten me upset and I put my hand through the, the door of the garage and it's like I'm not somebody who now wants to put my hand through a door or do any of this. Somehow along the way because I walked with him and because I asked from him, even unknowingly God changed me at the right time. And now I can look back and say, man, God, it's so nice to be changed. But you know what? He doesn't love me any more today than he loved me there when I had that problem. 
He loves me exactly the same. He didn't feel like that that was the thing that disqualified me from being in ministry or being a Christian. It's just who I was at that moment. And so I'm saying as you walk with God, start with Him where you're at. Acknowledge Him where you're at. Spend time with Him where you're at. He's not looking for perfection. He is perfection. He wants to be your perfection. He wants to be your completeness. He wants to be for you what you're looking. And then, yeah, He's going to change you. But remember, any change He brings to your life is not for Him. It's for you. It may glorify Him, and it may bring glory to Him to where you want to praise Him and worship Him, and it may be good, but everything God does for you is for you. And then you can take what He does for you, and you can be good to other people around you, and be able to minister to them, and bring the good that God brought to you to them. And, and that's really the way things change. Repentance really comes as you see the goodness of God. The goodness of God leads us into repentance. It leads us to change our minds about Him. It leads us to know that He's for us and not against us. We always have to remember that uh, Christ is the strength in us. Anything we accomplish, it's going to be God accomplishing it. And what's cool is if we give Him the accomplishments, He'll also take our failures and our falling. And for me, I want to give God the glory. I give God the glory that He lets me be able to be crazy and free and to sing and worship Him. I give God the glory because He uh, took a guy that wasn't that smart and has let me be successful in different things. It's all because of God. And I don't care where you find yourself at. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Some place God has has put within you a desire that you don't even maybe understand. And if you'll seek Him and if you'll look to Him, He'll just ignite you and release you into being everything you never knew you always wanted to be. Because God's more powerful than anything that we do. He's more powerful than anything we go through. He's the power that we need in our life. And so this morning as we fi finish up, I just want you to go away encouraged. I want you to go away with a light heart. I want you to go away thankful. I want you to go away from this time just uh, looking forward to an opportunity this week that either, either through any of the media that's around you that can you edify, exhort, and comfort some, someone. Let's leave the correction to God and let's do what we're supposed to be about. Let's edify, exhort, and comfort. I guarantee you God's going to get the job done here in the earth and we can just follow Him and enjoy following Him and take on His yoke because His yoke is easy and His burden is light. If what you're carrying in your relationship with God feels heavy and overwhelming, then you're carrying the wrong burden. Throw it off and find a place that will edify, exhort, and comfort you and lift you up so you can be in that spot to where you're not always seeing the negative, but you're seeing the positive because God is positively going to accomplish everything that He promised. Thanks for being with us this week. Uh, please enjoy your week. Have a great time. Enjoy your family. Uh, connect with them. And if you're, again, if you're alone, get on the phone and just call a random number. If you're going through a drive through uh, if you have the ability, again, buy somebody's meal. Just spread a little good in whatever place you can do it. And uh, God will use it for good. And not because you're trying to prove that you're anything, but just be who you are. You are made to give. And it's more blessed to be a giver than anything else. And as always, love one another. Have a great week.